If fascism was national syndicalism with a philosophy of actualism, Nazism was a racial socialism with a philosophy of international conquest. Lebensraum. I've explained what National Socialism is in detail in my five-hour documentary on Hitler's Socialism using 107 sources, 350 direct references, loads of quotes and notes and so on. If you want to know what National Socialism was, I'd recommend you watch that video and ignore the anti-Semitic Marxist trolls in the comments. The point is though that these two ideologies were completely separate from each other. They influenced each other slightly, and then they aligned together during the Second World War, but they weren't the same. And since the Nazis never called themselves fascists, and the fascists never called themselves Nazis, this became a problem for the Allied and Soviet powers after the war. The fascist regime in Italy didn't have death camps. It didn't murder Jews, only after the Germans marched in and took over were the Jews shipped off to be murdered. It didn't even kill that many of its own people, certainly not to the same extent as the Marxists had done. And the Germans didn't call themselves fascists. So the socialist propagandists had a problem. They had to find a way to associate fascism with Nazism. And if they failed to do that, the game would be up. And everyone would realize that fascism was just a different name for socialism. So, what the Marxists did was, they dived into the fascist party's ideology, looking for anything that could be used to link the ideas of fascism and Nazism together. And they found someone. One person. Just one guy. Yes, one guy who could bridge the gap. They picked the village idiot, a guy called Julius Evola. James Greger does an absolutely brilliant job of explaining what this guy was about, so if you want the details, his book, Mussolini's Intellectuals, is the one you must get. But I'm going to try and give a brief overview here. Giovanni Prizzosi, Italy's only committed anti-Semite, suddenly resurfaced together with Julius Evola, whom serious fascists were to forever dismiss as the Magic Baron. Julius Evola was a anti-fascist masquerading as a fascist, who then evolved into a semi-national socialist and a complete lunatic. To start with, Evola rejected the notion of the national totalitarian state, which was the central core concept of fascism. And he rejected the violence of the black shirt squads, and he rejected nationalism. Evola even opposed Giovanni Gentile, the founder of fascism. So, in a nutshell, he wasn't a fascist in any way, shape, or form. In fact, Evola was never a fascist, however the term is understood. Nothing of Evola's exotic ruminations appeared in any official fascist doctrinal pronouncements. Evola's writings were to be used exclusively to serve Mussolini's tactical purposes and then be allowed to fade away. Evola was a weirdo, but he was also anti-clerical. So when Mussolini had problems with the Catholic Church in the 1920s and 1930s, Mussolini wheeled out Evola and said, look, if you don't start bowing the knee to fascism, fascism will convert to whatever this lunatic believes in, and you won't like that, will you? So the Catholic Church was like, okay, okay, we'll talk. Again, this was purely tactical. But then in the 1930s, Evola moved from anti-fascism and anti-clericalism to some sort of weird racism which can't even be described as National Socialism. Evola wrote a book in 1941 which detailed his views on what he called spiritual racism. As Gregor points out, Evola was the sole spokesman for his brand of racism. His version of spiritual racism was completely different from even the ritualistic racism that Himmler believed in. Evola did believe in racial souls, like Hans Gunther, the race pope, did, but didn't believe in the Aryan race quite like the Nazis did. Evola thought that there was an Aryan solar Nordic race with a solar Nordic blood, 
He believed that fascism and national socialism provided a spirit that would allow a celestial race to cosmically re-emerge on Earth. And this celestial race was the primordial creative race of Hyperborea. And uh, just to fill you in on this one, according to Greek mythology, Hyperborea was a race of giants who lived in the north. So he believed in a giant race. A cosmic giant race. So, again, this is beyond, beyond the realm of stupidity. And this has nothing to do with fascism or national socialism. This guy even makes Himmler look sane. Gregor explains that some have claimed that Mussolini read and approved of Evola's racial theories, but this is doubtful, since Mussolini continued to object to the ideas of both Evola and National Socialism, and didn't allow National Socialist-esque racial theories into the doctrine of fascism. Just like he did with the Catholic Church, when Mussolini needed to bridge the gap with the Germans, who they were now in alliance with during the Second World War, he wheeled it out Evola and said, Look, look, we share the same blood or something, I don't know, give us some raw materials and stuff. <laughs> it was a tactical move, nothing more. The fact was that there was no anti-Semitism in Italy prior to 1938, and the only reason there was any anti-Semitism after 1938 was because Mussolini went to visit Hitler to try and forge an alliance in 1938. When he came back, he created some anti-Semitic laws to please Hitler and bridge the gap between the two ideologies. Think about it. If fascism and national socialism were so alike, then why would Mussolini have to create these laws? Surely he would have created them in the 16 years he was in power prior to this point. So again, it was purely tactical. Both Gregor and Farrell explain this to be the case, with Gregor stating that fascist anti-Semitism after 1938 wasn't a permanent feature of the fascist doctrines. Anyway, the point is that fascist doctrine and ideology wasn't racist. Racism only became an element due to Mussolini wanting to get into bed with Hitler, and Evola was used to peel back the covers and dim the lights. Irrespective of his contribution to Mussolini's purpose, Evola was never accorded any respect in fascist intellectual circles. And yet, even though Evola was the village idiot, even though he wasn't a fascist, even though he was the outlier, even though the vast majority of fascists and the entire fascist doctrine and ideology rejected what he did and who he was, the Marxists had found exactly what they were looking for. In retrospect, it appears evident that Evola was never particularly interested in fascism as such. In effect, he actually has no place in any history of fascist social and political thought. He is accorded a place because, years after the passing of fascism, discussants have chosen to identify him as the fascist source of the irrationalism and anti-humanism of contemporary extremism. He presumably provided the meaning of fascism for modern revolutionaries. So this guy, Evola, became the symbol of fascism even though he wasn't a fascist or a Nazi. He was the village idiot. Yet Marxist authors continue to paint him as the guy that fascism is all about. Fascism became an all-purpose term because one can eliminate from a fascist regime one or more features, and it would still be recognisable as fascist. Take away imperialism from fascism and you still have Franco and Salazar. Take away colonialization and you still have the Balkan fascism of the Ostaches. Add to the Italian fascism a radical anti-capitalism, which never much fascinated Mussolini, says Umberto, who shows here that he clearly hasn't read anything about Mussolini, and you have Urza Pound. Add a cult of Celtic mythology and the grail of mysticism, completely alien to official fascism, I'm glad you can actually admit that, Umberto, and you have one of the most respected fascist gurus, Julius Evola. 
nope, sorry, Mr. Echo, you're completely wrong here. Julius Evola was not a respected fascist guru. He wasn't even a fascist. You are wrong. And what's worse, you mention this guy twice in your famous Ur fascism. And you fail to mention any of the other main fascist intellectuals except Mussolini and Gentile. And you even say, Da, Mussolini did not have any philosophy. He had only rhetoric. Pfft, what a joke. He not only fails to define what fascism is, but proceeds to talk about National Socialism as though it was fascism too. And this is why there's lots of people today still ignorantly mixing the terms fascism and Nazism together because, just like Umberto Eco, they haven't done their homework. By denying that fascism was a version of socialism, by denying that it was national syndicalism with a philosophy of actualism, Marxist socialists have turned the word fascist into a meaningless statement. You have no idea what fascism is because socialists decided that the 